cracking. You're now watching Hot Topics on BNG TV. I got my name of Bobby Vance, and this is where we speak to some of your favorite people and some of your not so favorite people, and basically find out what's really cracking in the streets. And today I've got a very special guest with me, somebody who I feel everyone's been trying to interview. Um, it's quite a hard man to get as well. This is Pastor Toby of us today. Thank you very much for joining me. Hi, thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, <laughs> I must say I'm very impressed and surprised that you've started doing interviews. Because a lot of people, including BBC, of course, have tried to get a hold of you. Yeah. But you seem to be a very slippery guy to get a hold of. Why is that? I don't talk to racists. Okay. You know, that's a, that's, that's a very, that's a very, I mean, I'm not saying BBC are, aren't racist. I didn't, I didn't mention <laughs> any name. I'm just saying that I don't talk to organizations that don't respect our mm. color and don't yeah. do their research properly. Okay. Um, in order to put us off or on, okay. I don't talk to them. So how come you start doing interviews now then? Because I finally realized that within our community, yeah. there are still people who just want to know the truth. Yeah. And so I thought, let me come out and talk to people who yeah. want to know the truth. We of don't course. necessarily have to agree, but yeah. at least we have platform to share our own minds and yeah. it's not going to be tailored yeah. to satisfy the slave masters. Yeah, okay. So it's not an attempt to try and clean your name because of the whole backlash on the I, nation. I, I, don't, I don't care about name cleaning. Yeah. I'm on an assignment and I've done my job. Yeah, okay. So, See, because obviously, initially I thought maybe um, you might be doing interviews now to try and give yourself a better image, try and improve your image, so to speak, so and it makes you more up, um, approachable for certain industries or organizations. No, I don't want no industry. I don't want no organization. <laughs> I'm sent to do a work. I've done the work. So I'm not an actor. I'm not a footballer. Those ones need, and they work hard. They're good people. They need endorsements. I don't. Mm. So what do I need to clean the name for? Mm. The, best, the best name is yeah. gained by raising people, okay. leaders within our community. Um, so before we carry on, I feel like it's, it's, it'll be good to clear up for the viewers who are watching. If you're not aware who Pastor Toby is, Pastor Toby was previously the leader of um, Spat Nation. Who are, um, how would you describe Spat Nation actually? Um, well, church, first of all. Mm -hmm. I started a church about 15 years ago. But I think what we have majorly is a community movement mm -hmm. seeking the empowerment of young people within and outside of our community. Yeah, okay. But there's also a lot of controversy towards nation as a whole as an organization isn't there that that's that's what greatness means <laughs> okay. one of the things you said which quite struck me by surprise was something along the lines of the black community has nothing to offer you well i i said it before times like this <laughs> <laughs> so i'm thinking oh shoot should yeah. i have said that now yeah. they're gonna think but 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 on the serious note what i was trying to say with that is that i'm not going to in order to liberate a community you have to be free from them if we're going to bring change to our community, there are certain truths we have to share for ourselves. So um, a community that is only used to bringing down, mm -hmm. and I read one of your quotes, you're knowing to bring in down fellow black men, no. you know, uh -huh. a, but a community that by history, it's not today, you know, from Malcolm X to Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. a community that is used to bringing people down. Sometimes we have to say wild things to get the attention to say, listen, it's not just about if the community is healed, it's healed. If it's not, what can I do? I've done my best, like okay. my ancestors tried to do as well. Yeah. So I'm not saying that, I mean, that's my community. I'm yeah. forever going to be part of that community. Mm. But certain times we have to have some tough conversation. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, obviously, aside from one of the reasons you've already said what is like the real reason why you turned down the bbc's uh, request for an interview during the panorama documentary investigation okay because surely it would have made sense for you as the head of spanish at the time to approach at least do the interview and be like no you guys have these facts wrong here are the correct facts bbc don't want to know the truth okay. remember that before the, the the what you just mentioned now they've done five documentaries where they came to the church, mm. they came with cameras, and they did their investigation. BBC has f about five to five plus years of our accounting. Mm -hmm. Without them asking, I just say, you can have it. Yeah. They have donors list. Yeah. And that's why they did the first two, three interviews. This one, it was get them down. And yeah. that is because bad publicity sells. Yeah. So I've seen the letter they wrote. I've seen everything and I've consulted the people I need to consult and we knew that with that, they're going to twist whatever I say. Okay. 
So it's not going to play anything. It's just they needed to do that. It is to our community. Is the most the, that documentary is the is the most shamble. If there's any word like that, yeah. most shamble, shambolic. shambolic yeah. Thank you. you. You're a better grammar person than I. <laughs> most shambolic. Yeah interview ever or, or documentary yeah. ever but they, they they know they're going to ride on their past glory yeah. and this is a dying organization by the way who watches bbc they yeah. needed to get into the black community and yeah. they know that controversy they know we get excited at anything that looks successful yeah. and let's bring it down so i'm not gonna I'm not going to jump out and yeah. start explaining to yeah. people who have already made up their minds. No, that's fair, that's fair. But, so you said that they did five of the... the about four. five. About so five. Were, were all five of them with, the, with a bad narrative? No. Okay, so about four of them is all good, good narrative. And those four, did you agree to be a part of those four? Oh, yes, because I saw that they were really searching from, for the truth. They yeah. stayed in, in some of the houses, as yeah. in stayed there overnight, spoke to people. So if you now want to do another one yeah. and you don't even move near the church, yeah. not even close. Yeah. Oh, come on. So we already know what you want to do. Okay. Because I thought maybe one of the reasons why you turned it down was because obviously with the BBC, a big company like that, organization like that, they have a big team and they're able to do deep research. And I thought maybe you turned it down because you're afraid to let them kind of investigate you, so to speak. Uh, I'm, <laughs> you can never become a PT in UK without being investigated. Okay. It's not possible. This is UK. This is now even, even America, you will still be investigated. So before anything called limelight, remember mm -hmm. that I've, I've sat down with police in Scotland Yard many times. Mm -hmm. They're not going to talk to you on those levels without finding out who you are, what's up with you. It depends, though. Sometimes I feel like the police, for example, the police would speak, would want to speak to the leader of a gang if they can find out information about how that gang or other gangs moves, as, as an example. Yeah. So if you're seen as somebody who's leading a corrupt organization, for example, they would sit down with you because they'd want to find out either how you run yours or how maybe you can tell them how other organizations like that are ran. That, that's how they get the informants, right? It, that's why I said on, so, so on that level, on my own level, yeah. which I can't get into details right now, no, of course, okay. but on my own level, they're not going to speak like we've spoken. Okay, Let so me just put it that way. Was your level a more positive conversation? Hundred percent. Okay. And I've never had any any um, any problem with the laws or stuff mm. like that. Never. Okay. Not once. Okay. So um, another. And thing that's not to say those who have are wrong. Let me just correct that. We all make mistakes in life, but mm -hmm. I haven't. It's just let's sit down and get solutions mm. to the problems. I I think I'm the only one who have been blunt enough to tell the police that I really don't care about drug dealers i don't care if people sell drugs or mm -hmm. not i mean we shouldn't sell drugs mm -hmm. it destroys life i am more concerned about young people killing each other mm -hmm. and that's me saying that look i understand the community i know people do what they have to do but that's mm -hmm. not my issue so we've had blunt conversation and on that level of yeah. this conversation which again legally yeah. i must be careful what course, i see yeah, on yeah, that course, side yeah. um they, there's no way you're getting into those places some of those places that have been without being without questions being asked i mean i feel like if they, if they see you as an asset they'd be more willing to let certain things slide as long as you can provide them with the necessary information they, they need to take down certain people no as I an never, example i'll never do that i'll never take anyone down for for the police <laughs> or for any organization that is not run by our people but I, again i have to be careful with that again. <laughs> but seriously I'll, I'll never i've never done it in my life my job mm. i lead many young people my mm -hmm. job is to provide alternatives mm -hmm. and to negotiate with the powers that be in other words i'm not going to jump out and say uh, and start crossing organizations because i need to have conversations with them mm -hmm. for the betterment of the young people in our community mm -hmm. and so but that's not my it's not my job to say hey look at this person does that i'll mm -hmm. never do that but obviously you wouldn't go out of your way to be the one to point it out but if they were to say to you okay for example we'll let this slide if you give us information on this and it's beneficial to you and your organization. That's not something you do. Uh, unfortunately, for I mean, up to this moment, there's nothing I need any organization, and I'm saying this publicly. Mm -hmm. Not the police, not the government. I don't. There's nothing I need them to let slide. Mm -hmm. I'm asking them, come do anything you want to do. You want to know what's the source of income, what's this? Do it. Investigate. There's nothing to slide. So mm -hmm. I'm not weak at negotiating. Mm. I can negotiate the betterment of young people yeah. because I don't have any skeleton. I don't need them to let anything slide. 
a lot of people were saying that you do that you came across as if you were speaking quite badly on the black community for example when you said black people don't like to read and another thing you said in the com- what, what was it well mainly the black people don't like to read thing now have you watched that interview back since you've done it um i let me see i think i watched it for about 10 minutes okay. but because i know what i said okay so um, you remember saying black people don't like to read we really don't like to read oh, but then that's a very objective thing to say yeah I'm being objective. That's not that's not generalized. It's just majority. Sometimes you judge things by majority. And remember, I deal with a lot of black people yeah. one on one. This is not even social media thing. As in, I see us every day. Yeah. And we just don't like to read. We don't uh, read. See, you yourself, you sound like a very well spoken man. You sound like somebody who has read a lot. So I, I'm, I'm assuming you like to read yourself, right? I try. I try my best. So doesn't that contradict you saying that black people it don't does, like to read? That's what I'm saying. There is a minority yeah. who read. Yeah. So it's not just generalized, but majority. But then even to say it's a minority, I wouldn't say it's a minority who like to read. Maybe, well, obviously, you said you're only speaking from your, your, your experiences, the yeah. people you hang around with. So is that for me to understand that? What, what would you say? Do black people read? Of course they do. Black people are, are sure? able to do anything that that anyone else can do. Okay. Whether they choose to read or not is is down to them. But to say that they, exactly. they but to I, say that they don't read from my experience, I don't think we do. So you've only chilled with people who don't from read. From my experience, I don't think so you, we you've do. Only, so you only hang around with illiterates then? No, really. Majority, minority, those are two different things. Majority of us from my experience, I yeah. don't think we read. Okay. Would you consider yourself a narcissist? No. Okay, because a, a lot of the things you say and the way you come across, yeah. they do have narcissistic tendencies. Truth. Truth is very, very important. Mm-hmm. And Jesus said it. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Okay. And I'm not the first person to say we don't like to read. I'm not going to mention names. Yeah. I think Marcos, Marcos Gavi said it as well. Okay. Honorable Elijah Muhammad complained mm. about how much we seek knowledge within our community. Mm. So I do not speak of my own authority. Mm. I speak of authorities of our ancestors, mm. their own experience with black people and how we react to knowledge. We mm. consume, we don't produce. Mm-hmm. Now, these are the results of a community that doesn't seek knowledge. Mm-hmm. So it's not just about what you do in your room because you probably read, maybe everybody here reads. Mm-hmm. It's about the result of the majority mm-hmm. within our community. And that's a campaign we must run. Um, Wale Shoenka is a Nobel laureate. Mm-hmm. And that's, the, so I'm, I've quoted three people now who complain about the black community and their, mm-hmm. their quest for knowledge. Mm-hmm. We feed on the other on other communities' knowledge. That's mm-hmm. what we feed on. Whatever they tell us is what we go for. They tell us in the Bible, this, this, is this. And we just follow these things without looking at it. Okay, so now would be a good time for me to mention that me, myself, I'm not religious for that exact reason. Uh, neither am I. I'm not religious. But you're a pastor. How can you not be religious if you're a pastor? You're not even called to be religious. The Bible was never a religious book. The okay. Bible was not written to Christians. It was, it was written to a nation. It okay. started with the nation of Israel. It's okay. a nation book, not a religious book. Okay. Now you've just confused me because... <laughs> you, you've, you've just confused me because I was under the impression that a pastor who works um, in a church for, or, or something like Spanish, for example, is yeah. their job to sort of bring Christ to people and educate them on with Christ them. and things like that. But how can you not be religious and be that, a pastor? But you realize that's why they crucified Christ, right? Because he wasn't religious. The religious people of his days were the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And okay. here comes this guy, yeah. young guy, 30 years old, comes out yeah. and is exactly against what the religious statutes and all the words okay. for. He was against it. Wait, so what, why are you not religious? I'm curious now. Because religion was never God's intention. It's relationship. It's relationship with God. Okay. So it's not about I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian. It's mm-hmm. about relationship with Jesus Christ. It was never religion. So, so would you say you have a good relationship with Jesus Christ? Absolutely, yes. Isn't that a form of religion? It is not religion. So, what it's is it? Relationship. Relation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone else is confused, please let us know in the comments because I'm really, I'm really confused right now. <laughs> it, you, you, you just need, let, let me simplify it. You just need to look properly at the style of Jesus. Okay. This guy. So there was a religious order in his days. Yeah. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, those were the religious people. Yeah. Then Jesus comes mm-hmm. and says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And yeah. he hung around with the thugs of the community and all the all the 
in court. The yeah. prostitutes actually yeah. were his best friends. Yeah. So religion hated him. It mm. was religion that crucified Jesus. Mm. It wasn't the government. You know, it's funny as you were describing that. Um, from someone who's from outside looking in, uh, yeah. one of the viewers, for example, yeah. they could almost say that's how you're describing, like you're kind of describing yourself. Somebody that's... who walks around with supposedly thugs to to give them wealth. Huh. Well, look at Jesus. So don't just don't just look at what the the white man. Uh, I, I, I hope I can use white man. Yeah, on yeah, the show. yeah, go for it. <laughs> don't just look at what the white man told us the Bible was. Mm -hmm. Look at what Jesus really was. Okay. He walked around the street with all these guys yeah. and he taught them the way of life. So is that what you're trying to do? It's not trying. It's who I am. Okay. So would you consider yourself the, the modern day Jesus, so to speak? I'm far from Jesus. That's the part <laughs> of I'm far from Jesus. I'm not Jesus. But, but I'm supposed to follow his footsteps, not become, not become a religious pastor. Mm. I'm supposed to connect with human beings. This is supposed to be about people. It's okay. not about someone that looks right from your own religious yeah. perception. Okay. So you said just now that um, Jesus said to his disciples that they should follow him and he'll, he'll give them wealth. And that's what he did. He will make them. Make them wealth. Yeah, that's what we did. So as I said as well, that's almost similar to what you're seeing as you're doing. So you, you're you walking around with supposed, not, not, I'm not saying no one's a thug, by the way. No one come at me. It, it, it's supposed, a, yeah. <laughs> supposed thugs. Yeah. Um, now, what wealth are you offering them in order for, you, for them to stay loyal to you? The mind first. It's not wealth... Money don't solve poverty. Uh -huh. Money never solves poverty. Of course. Um, so it is the mind first. Mm -hmm. I came into a community, uh, uh, especially in Europe, and realized that as much as we can live in, in, in a wealthy country, our minds are messed up. Mm -hmm. The mind is messed up. That's why a young man can kill a young man. The mind, because the guy wants to become wealthy, he wants to have money. He mm -hmm. follows... Um, Again, drug dealer leaders, because he wants to have money. His mm. definition of wealth is money. So it's not what I'm promising. It's what we were promised by scriptures. When, when G, You know, Jesus never preached about Christianity. You know, there's no word Christianity in the Bible, by the way. So where did it come from? Kingdom. It came from other people, naming other people. Okay. And then the white man told us Christianity is X, Y, Z. Mm. Jesus preached kingdom. He spoke about a way of life, another mm. way of thinking, mm. changing our mind and how we respond to things. So mm. it's about seeing possibilities. Mm -hmm. It's about not, I, I don't want to use the word dreaming because I don't want to be a motivation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's about the, the complete change of mindset. Yeah. Realizing that if something is for anybody, it's for all of us. Mm -hmm. Now, after that, I then create structures, mm -hmm. meaning that now you see possibilities. How do you get there? And mm -hmm. I think that's what we've done over the years and we've done it well. Not without mistakes. We do have mistakes, but of course. we get better. Okay. So, um, would one of those mistakes, uh, would you consider them allowing people within your organization? These, the, again, these are alleged, nothing's confirmed. Yeah. Allowing, allegedly allowing people in your organization to, um, I guess the better to describe it is, is groom young minds and then, uh, and then abuse them financially. For example, the Vic Santoro situation where he claims that his brother was um, uh, groomed by one of your people to then his details were used to open a bank account. Uh, they cleaned him out with mm. some kind of loan, business loan or something, mm. and then left him hanging. Yeah. So is that one of the things that you would call teaching your followers? Or never, never, ever. But let me, let me just take a general, uh, I don't know the name you mentioned, but no, 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 I'm talking. Oh. I'm talking. Let me just... Um, it, it, it's not about the specific case, the mm -hmm. structure of the case. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to actually find out mm -hmm. the truth about things because mm -hmm. the most wicked thing is to hear one side and not hear the no, other No, of course, side. of course. There's uh -huh. always two sides so to a story. There's always two sides. Yeah. So in cases like that, when we've heard things like that and we've investigated it, if the person alleging is right, mm -hmm. then my job or the job of the leaders is to make sure that um, things are corrected, mm -hmm. things are done the right way. And in most cases, which is about 95% of the case, you realize that it's not true. Mm -hmm. That's still admitting that 5% 
can't be true. Mm -hmm. And what do you do in such cases in a big organization like ours? You then correct it. You then say, no, you can't do that. That's mm -hmm. wrong. Because remember, the church is not filled with saints. It's no, all of manner of people of course. Yeah, of course. coming. And especially our age demographic. So you yeah. will have people who do what is wrong. But how many can we know? But the ones we know, we've always made sure that it is... It is um, it is corrected dealt with appropriately de dealt with appropriately and make yeah. sure that people are not cheated so yeah. that's far from me because that will be counterproductive that's yeah. not what we're set up for so even even those numbers you gave like um 95 percent are wrong and which means that there's, there's room for the five percent to be true right yeah uh now that five percent must be quite a big five percent because whilst doing my research for today's interview i found a lot of people who made similar claims people claiming that they were encouraged to um, give blood, for example, or give the sh <laughs> give the. Sh I, I know that that, that yeah. one was wild. When I saw, it, I thought, what? <laughs> yeah, encouraged to give blood. They encouraged to give the the whole paychecks um, during offerings. They were encouraged to give um, what was it? Uh, a lot of uh, the, oh, the, the student of loans, student loan. Yeah, yeah, all sorts of things in, okay. in terms of um, providing financially yeah. to the, to Spac Nation. Yeah, are all those claims false then? No, all of it cannot be false. Mm. That's what I'm saying. So, I hope the blood one is false because but, that's but, crazy. <laughs> no, but, but the structure does not allow that. Mm. In the case where someone had then taken advantage, every mm. organization evolves, mm. meaning that you find that people do or take advantage of things and do what is wrong, then you 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 um enact laws yeah. to protect people. Yeah. But you can only discover these things as you go. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying that in hundred cases you find out that 95 percent one is a boyfriend girlfriend situation yeah. that they, 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 they're they falling out falling and then out somebody's and angry yeah, yeah, yeah. and always it's going to be spark nation because spark nation can attract the name the numbers and yeah. all that yeah but that comes with greatness it we have to accept that mm -hmm. so what do you do to them protect people you evolve as an organization you mm -hmm. you provide laws you put measures in place you train your leaders it's mm -hmm. a whole lot of work mm -hmm. and you make sure that it it becomes difficult mm -hmm. for any leader to then take advantage of stuff. You announce more. Look, if someone asks you to do this, mm -hmm. these are our policy. Mm -hmm. This is this is so. It, it is what any organization would do, and that's yeah. what we've been trying and making sure that we do to make sure that we protect people. So I'm not going to sit here and say there's never a wrong in an organization. Yeah. A thousand people, <laughs> <laughs> hundreds hundreds of leaders. Yeah. There will be people who do things that even I as the leader will say, Why, what did what you, you just doing? do? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. And you correct them. And I've heard people say, oh, but let's know if you correct. I can't come on um, your social media and start saying, oh, by the way, I'm correcting X, Y, Z. Yeah. No, we just just have to put measures in place yeah. so now i stepped down as the pastor mm -hmm. but i've given them measures based on experiences of what we've gone through and then the organization will get better and mm -hmm. better and takes care of its people um the rent for spat nation to maintain your buildings is something around a million pounds the rent yeah no i was saying that what it cost us to run each service for a year is close to a million okay and th those are things in public space we're, we're on the charity so does, does each individual i don't know what you call them like each individual church or each individual um area or do they do they have like some kind of kpi like some kind of targets that they, they must hit in terms of financially to, to make that one million no 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 that like the Anglican church, yeah, any church for that matter, but let me take the Anglican yeah. church for example, you always have to have target. Okay. It was ridiculous. BBC was saying no, it said target. Anglican church put their target outside of their church. Yeah. They have aim. What organization runs without target? We have target, but these targets are not compulsory. Okay. It's very simple. I realized that because I'm going to be pastoring young people for mm -hmm. years of my life, and that's why I'm saying that it's impossible for me to say the black community have nothing to offer me. I'm yeah. probably the leading investor in black community in this yeah. country. That's the fact. The, the, the fruits are there, the people are there, and over the years we've been able to build that, mm. and that is our major source of income to help the church run. Mm. Now, people are free as, an, as a charity organization to donate as they see fit. Mm -hmm. That's not we saying you have to do this and that. Yes, yeah. you will then have leaders who are overzealous about things. And yeah. those zeal, you must cut to size. Yeah, because I was going to say, obviously, in order for you to make that one million a year, maybe some people might feel pressured to, to try and hit the, 
the target, for example, for the month or something to provide you with that money, that could then obviously lead not to provide t- me uh, the provide organization, the organization <laughs> with, with the money. Yeah, that could then lead to what where these claims are coming from in terms of um, people getting scammed and X, Y, and Z. 90, but, but you're saying that there's 95 percent no... of it again i'll keep saying the word 95 <laughs> so that so that it's not taken as you're saying nothing wrong no 95 percent mm. of it are uh, people falling out and then we have a lot of pile up dossier mm-hmm. of it's just full of you see mm-hmm. it and you, you imagine you call a guy and say did you do this and then he shows you text and say yeah we had relationship this that mm. that, that happened so yeah we evolve mm-hmm. and we get to a place where we say okay this might be misinterpreted for this. Then mm-hmm. what do you do in this case? You're yeah. coming out to say, no, you don't have to do this. You, don't. Mm-hmm. you have to keep putting measures in place mm-hmm. because young people can be quite zealous. Yeah. And then they do what they want to do at the time. And then one year after, I didn't want to do it. No, but you, you decided to do it. But ob- so- obviously young people are also very, very um, easily influenced. So if, if, if somebody can convince them that something at the time is a good idea, they then decide to go along with it in a year's time when they are older and they realize it wasn't a good idea yeah they're the ones that are left in a bad position for example and yeah. it's not their fault because at the time they were convinced by somebody that it was a good idea to do something for example and that's why we have to keep put uh, i mean keep measures in place and evolving in our methods mm-hmm. to let them know that you don't have to do xyz mm. and then another thing we've done and i think spark nation deserves a praise for this we don't take general offerings in church why would a church not do that it's because we're trying to reduce pressure we don't want anybody to feel like oh my next person is given x amount i have to do Mm. it now we've we we've done that more than four five years ago Mm -hmm. we don't we don't take offerings outside Mm. we don't we don't pressure people in services catholic churches still take offering even in covid they go around with collectors Oh. Collectors are around. I found that out three days ago. I Collectors did, go from know. house to house. I'm saying it publicly now. So now, what can we do as a young organization helping the community? We've put more money into this community than any footballer. Okay. I'm saying that publicly. So, so what is the what is your what is the money for the organization organization come from then? If you're not taking offerings in church, I just said it. I said over the years, more than ten years, we've made sure that we put businesses in place that can make this thing so you, happen. So you have businesses that a provide lot, for lot. the money for the for 100%. the organization. Okay, okay. More than ten years, by the way. Okay. More than ten years. So that's even way before Spark Nation became we're popular if we're popular mm-hmm. way yeah, before yeah. you're popular you're, you're, you're very <laughs> way, popular <laughs> way, way before we've sent so many kids to school Harvard mm-hmm. University Oxford mm-hmm. more than any um, artist or actor or whatever mm. we've done all of that why because I believed in helping with the little we have raising little businesses until they become big but I'm mm-hmm. not going to come out and announce those businesses within no, the course. black community they will destroy everything oh, I mean I wouldn't say that that's a bit again that's that's never a wild comment to say. I wouldn't you say. You know that's intentional. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. This show. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm assuming you 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 was doing it full time, running Spat Nation. You was doing it full time. That was your full time job. No, I don't believe in full time pastoring. Okay. You you, you um, you do other things to make mm-hmm. pastoring work. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming that the other businesses are very um, uh, what's the word, successful, so to speak. Well, some are, some fail, some are well. They're healthy. I mean, us. like. You, there must be the money must come from somewhere because you live in a 2.5 million house in Surrey. Uh, I, I we've we, we, we've I seen li- the clothes you wear on Instagram. I, I we, li- we've seen the cars you drive. You're basically the UK's hush puppy. Uh, I don't know who that <laughs> is, but I assume that's a rich person somewhere. A very rich person, yes. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I won't. I won't embrace poverty over prosperity. Okay, but then my question is, like, surely the money, some money, must come from the church. For me, yeah, never, not once in my life. Because they don't even have enough. Church don't have enough money to even cater for themselves. They mm-hmm. can't. So you have to go hard and look for money to sustain the church. It's not the other way around. Okay. Never in my life. No. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how, because obviously the the church running costs is roughly around a million a year. You said right? 
in terms to, to, to run the organization roughly more than a, a, a little bit over that okay and then you have businesses in place to to fund that no, so you, there's no pressure on the on the on the leaders but you must remember that the businesses are free will uh-huh. so that the charity don't have me now say, oh so the church have businesses no yeah. the catholics have businesses from yeah. the church yeah um built by the church money yeah. that's not the case for yeah. us it's free will someone mm-hmm. support me supports mm-hmm. the work and mm-hmm. make sure that we can so that there's no pressure everyone who is a pastor whatever in spark nation mm-hmm. have their own either nine to five work mm-hmm. or their own business that they do okay so um as i said you sort of the church running cut well the organization running cost is roughly around a million yeah you live in a house which is 2.5 million you drive pretty a big. bit um, above that okay a bit above a bit. That. sorry guys almost three million <laughs> you drive really nice cars you're you're constantly offending with fendi as you said <laughs> so where does your money come from god <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ maybe i should start believing in god myself because i just, should I need to try try it <laughs> i'm sure some people ah, can I say it's god? <laughs> you you look but can you can you, don't can you see why people might have a bad it, um, a bad view of yourself for example it's not a, it, that's one of the things that put me off of churches i don't understand how a pastor can drive a white range Rover. it is but then it is not a bad view it's an uninformed view so okay. i've stepped down as the pastor now mm-hmm. yeah so do you you've listened to me now would you feel like a motivational speaker or a businessman is more intelligent than me why because i'm a pastor that means i can't walk and get resources mm-hmm. i can't be as prosperous as someone else a pastor is just a human being mm-hmm. who answer the call yeah. in other words our own measurement of a pastor must mm. be this guy must be qualified to do other things mm. and i think i mentioned it in the last interview yeah. i've got offers around the world i yes, work with yeah. nations the, yeah, the, even till nation. now yeah yes yes even till now i work mm-hmm. with nations but yeah. i'm not gonna be what i want to be known for is my pastoring so yeah. i could switch mm-hmm. and say hey guys i do x business this the but that's not what i want to be known for i don't need to impress anybody so, with it because what i'm trying to understand is obviously prior to you stepping down i'm trying to understand how involved you was with spat nation um uh, and in order to you for you to run that alongside your other businesses for you to live in a almost three million pound house how involved really was you with that nation by the way let me say this the Anglican vicar lives in st john's hood Mm -hmm. st john's hood Mm -hmm. and that's not even three million those are millions of pounds Mm -hmm. just for i don't trust those guys either to be honest (laughs) (laughs) i respect them (laughs) you know so um, what I'm saying, in other words, is I live with 16 people. Mm-hmm. 16. Yeah. And I've always lived with Six, numbers of yeah. people. So it's not just about my house. Mm-hmm. It's about what can accommodate people, what can help them. Mm-hmm. So how we got there from... I, I used to live in one bed. Mm-hmm. I was a kitchen potter. I was washing plates in kitchen in mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That That was my life. So how do you combine both? I'd walk. Mm-hmm. I sleep for two hours for the last <laughs> 10 years. Okay. At the moment, I sleep on. I I kind of sleep on sleeping pills because mm. I've been used to not sleeping. That's hard work. You, if you want to live a, a lifestyle, you want people, um, you want to help people, and a sixteen bed house or whatever is what helps them. You have to work for it. The church can't even afford that right now. The church can't pay my bills. Mm-hmm. They don't have the money. Okay, but then prior to you stepping down, how involved? How much of your time? Uh, in a week, for example, would you say you was you spent on ninety percent? Ninety percent. Yeah, you do business or other things. Ten percent. You just mm-hmm. have to be effective at it and get smarter as you go. So that ten percent may put you in a three million pound house. <laughs> Again, a bit of that. Uh, okay. Um, now I don't just want to be shot <laughs> so that if someone is angry with me, they better go all the way because I'm not yeah. going to apologize for. No, no, no. At. Obviously, I, I, I'm I, I, just saying. I, I, I do. I, I appreciate a black man who's able to work hard and get the things you have for example yeah. Yeah. as long as they did it the right way um and anything like that then i appreciate that even if you did it the wrong way as long as you're the wrong way to the right people then we will be won't, we won't go too much into that kind of thing so i'm not saying that it's a bad thing i just i just want to understand how involved you was so i can understand how, how much transparency you have throughout the entire spec nation as a whole or two thousand people as you said the, the the thing is everyone who is around me they know what i do mm-hmm. they know the contacts that i have and that's not even last year or two years ago for mm-hmm. like 10 years now yeah they know what i've done in other countries and yeah. why i do what i do and yeah. they know that 
hundred percent of whatever I get comes back to the community. Mm-hmm. Hundred. Mm-hmm. That's not even ninety nine percent. Hundred percent. Again, I would love, and that's why I'm public. There's no man that can live like I'm living in racist Europe. Mm-hmm. Raises Europe and not be cut down. All these, oh, they're gonna catch on to it. Listen, every single day I'm in the public. Yeah. I'm here, like mm-hmm. I'm not gone anywhere. Mm-hmm. And so if the right people sit down with me and say, oh, what is your source? What is this? They'll see it. It's mm-hmm. there. There's even nothing to hide about it because I don't have what people think I have. Even Defendi, you're not sure if it's real or fake. It could be from China. I mean, your house is three million pounds. I'm sure it's real. Oh, okay, yeah, that has to be real. I'm sure it's real. I'm sure it's real. <laughs> it has to be real. <laughs> but Defendi could be from um, China. No, no, I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. So with your your leaders, before you appoint the leaders for each congregation, I'm, I'm assuming you do some kind of um, background check on where they came from and how much you can trust them, right? We try. The church is to give people chances. Mm-hmm. It, it, my job is to tell people what they can be and make them what they can be. Would they disappoint us sometimes? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Mm-hmm. And would that disappoint themselves? Maybe. Mm-hmm. And I'm supposed to restore them. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, we do background check. And our kind of church, imagine the background <laughs> check <laughs> <will> come out <laughs> mad. <laughs> okay. So, why is it that when some of... Um, the members of your church leave, yeah. they then come out and say, this happened, that happened, all the negativity, negativity starts to come out. Why is it that happens so often? Sometimes, like divorce, husband and wife divorce, and they come up, <laughs> you, you, were, you were in the married court, and you said, do you accept this man? And you say, yes, I do, and you kissed each other. Yeah. And then 10 years down the line, or sometimes lesser, mm-hmm. you are out saying it's the worst man in the world. Sometimes, you know, it is what it is. Okay. This is how relationships work. Yeah. But, but the number of people who do that, mm-hmm. compared to some silent um, majority mm-hmm. it's huge it's just that some people who have good opinion who have left they're not going to come on social media and start talking okay using that same analogy yeah then you could sort of say that it's kind of like being married when you your partner is treating you like shit and you put up with it because you have to until you had enough and you have to leave and then you go public so well, it, church it could, it could be church, the same way right unlike church you don't have to Nothing holds you in a church. A church is just, you can walk out of a church tomorrow. Yeah, but like you just go. Like you can just even vanish from a church. The same, <laughs> the, 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 the same can be said about um, a, a domestic abusive relationship. Like really and truly, if you want to step out the door, you can. But that fear of stepping out the door is what keeps you there. I, I don't know what fear will keep a person in a church. There are like 10,000 churches. Mm-hmm. And this is thousands of people. Sometimes I, I've seen people sometimes when you know i don't watch youtube i never mm. i'm never on youtube but sometimes you have concerned people who send this to you and i see someone sitting down there saying i'm a minister and i'm saying guys do you know this person no you're not a minister we don't yeah. even know you yeah. so you can walk out of a church a mm-hmm. marriage has cultural expectation family expectation mm-hmm. a church is a place you decided to go to mm-hmm. and then you can walk out of the place and you can share your own opinion and sometimes and don't forget we are in social media age where mm-hmm. everybody's pressure to be somebody but then don't you feel that obviously like you said Spat Nation which I which I applaud you guys for you like to give people um, second chances you give people a chance in general right yeah. no matter where they've come from yeah. but then couldn't you say that it's possible that some of the those people who have been given a chance could still be bad eggs and have pressured some people to stay within the organisation for the benefit of the organisation uh, well, is that not a possibility well maybe it is I've not seen any mm-hmm. but let me tell you there are people who are uh, on um those sites speaking about spark nation who have robbed houses of spark nation oh so it is not a matter of uh, i think people are abusing us wearing clothes that we gave them our clothes you, bro you don't even have the decency to remove to the shirt we gave you just change <laughs> wear something else yeah so again these are the things you must accept as a leader mm-hmm. these so either sometimes you take the criticism and you improve on it sometimes you know oh come on you're looking for fame and you must be allowed to seek fame sometimes mm-hmm. it's the age we're in okay now um a very popular uh, I, I don't know i guess a phrase or or whatever that my mom used to say to me all the time is there's no smoke without fire growing up i heard that a million times my teachers used to say to me there's no smoke without fire yeah. now i feel like i can apply that same thing in terms of describing spat nation surely right. there's no smoke without fire yeah and i've said it there might be issues mm-hmm. and any organization mm-hmm. if if our community was right what you do with organizations mm-hmm. are, if there's a problem there 
Yeah. You go in, you, elders come together and you ask questions mm -hmm. and you fix whatever may be wrong in that organization. So I've said it and that's why I keep using 5% to 95%. That yes, there may be 5% things that needs to be improved, um, things that need to be changed, and mm -hmm. we keep doing that. But mm -hmm. for me to sit now here and say an organization is perfect from birth, that would be deceitful. Mm -hmm. But also, we must also admit that we must look at the right more than the wrong. Mm -hmm. We must look at how many people are off street more than those who are still there. The, the fact of the matter is, according to certain institutions in this country, if I let go of some people in Spark Nation, the streets will be on more fire. There will be more problems. That's what we need to applaud more. And okay. then you encourage those who are making those sacrifices, yeah. and then they get better. Yeah. But if the leader now says, I don't want to hear anything, I'm always right, then there's a problem. But mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. Okay. Okay, so so this is you basically saying it's a possibility that could happen, but it's it's not your fault kind of thing. No, no, no. I'll take responsibility for everything. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent. That's mm -hmm. leadership. Mm -hmm. But don't just jump on social media mm -hmm. and start trolling and say, "Oh, they done this." Okay, mm -hmm. what is the fact of this? Because what the other, what the racist country then does is they will take it and spin it. Yeah, it's, uh, one, someone will come, a pretender, a major mm -hmm. pretender will come, an MP is going to come <laughs> and say, "Oh, I'm helping the community." Your community was crime infested, mm -hmm. and you never spoke about young people, mm -hmm. never, not once, mm -hmm. until some black people started talking about Spark Nation, and all of a sudden you become an advocate for a mm -hmm. community you couldn't give a damn about? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. So that's not something you're buying into? Oh, come on. It's deceitful. Okay. You can critique something. Okay. You can critique it, but don't wait till election time. Mm -hmm. Don't 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 okay. realize that these people can gather more people more than votes, us, yeah. and then you you start talking against yeah. it. That's okay. you you're calling us idiots as a community. Mm -hmm. You you you. Uh, anyway, let me leave that for another <laughs> time. <laughs> okay. Um. So you've recently stepped down from um leading Spat Nation, right? Yeah. Okay. So let me quickly explain to the viewers in case like yourself they don't know who hush puppy is so hush puppy is a nigerian uh billionaire i guess who d done similar like yourself on social media so he'd constantly post his his cars his holidays his jets his, I, his met, houses i don't do holidays no. <laughs> but i get what you mean I yeah what you mean. he would flaunt his wealth so to speak okay. right okay. until he recently got arrested by the dubai police because okay. they found out that his wealth came from they found out that his wealth came from fraudulent activities. Okay. And obviously, when you flaunt your wealth like that, it's people are going to start looking into you. Where did this money come from? Yeah. Now, when, when I saw you'd step down, the yeah. first thing that came into my head was, have you stepped down because they're getting too close? <laughs> <laughs> you thought, hey, it's too hot in this kitchen. Let me leave. <laughs> You, Why did I, you step down? I, I don't know what happens in Dubai, but I can tell you for a fact that UK system is harsher than that. <laughs> it's not gonna you're not gonna breathe. I'm a free man, I'm on the street. <laughs> there is nothing I mean you will breathe if you give them information that can let you go. Me. I Just wish I, for example, I, I for even example. wish I have those information. <laughs> but the reason why I stepped down is that I've always believed in generational leadership. Yeah. The next pastors are younger than me. So I wanted this style of church to change from knowing one man all your life. Your parents mm -hmm. were there and it's still the same man leading that church till he's 70 and 80. No, mm -hmm. that's counterproductive to what we're preaching. Okay. It is, I've built a world 15 years from three people to thousands of people. Let the next generation lead when I, whilst I oversee them. Mm -hmm. And then I have other work to do in the nations. It's mm -hmm. just step up so that people can have something to aspire to. That's called leadership. Okay. Now, um, the people that you've put in place to take over yourself, yeah. I'm assuming those, those are people that you trust to lead the organization in the right direction. Yeah. Prior to appointing them, um, again, I'm assuming you, you did your homework in terms of whether they're the right people to yeah. lead the organization. I did background check. Okay. Three years in prison, one of them. Okay. Was in prison for three years. Mm -hmm. So that's what the background check came <laughs> back. <laughs> so now that you've left, are you going to sort of have a oversight every now and again just to look to see if things are going okay? Or have you completely left it to them and you're... No, go I'm, with your I'm still the I'm still the global pastor of Nation Family as we mm -hmm. call ourselves now, mm -hmm. um, which is Spark Nation still. Mm -hmm. So I'm still the global pastor. I still oversee it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just about trusting them; it's about they've earned their stripe. Yeah. One of them have been with me for ten years. Mm -hmm. Ten years after prison, it came. What, the second day after leaving mm -hmm. prison, also one of yeah. them that's Pastor Sam. Another one is Pastor Dami, youngest mm -hmm. chartered engineer in the UK. Yeah. Um, and all that. So. 
I believe, I believe human beings change, of course. but I believe in their leadership. They've led fellowships for years. Mm-hmm. Spark Nation has always been five churches, mm-hmm. always been. Mm-hmm. It's the coming together of five churches that makes a Spark Nation. So it's just them steering, I mean, d- driving, taking the steering right now whilst I still oversee them. You just said something interesting to me there. You just used a different name. Uh, other Nation than... Family. So you have you changed your name now? Yeah, well, unofficially, yes, uh-huh. because Spark Nation is not even an official name. These yeah. are acronyms. These are things that just came up. So mm-hmm. it's just Spark Nation, Spark Nation. So we've changed it to Nation Family mm-hmm. now, but it's still Spark Nation. Okay, so... Um, I like to play with things. I like I like movement. Yeah. I, I don't no, like no, no, static no. things. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, so I think now is a good time for me to tell you that I have a degree in marketing and I work, I work in marketing. Now, one of the things that I've noticed while working in marketing is when a company has a lot of bad press, they'll yeah. change their name and yeah. try and start again. Right. So by you guys changing your name, it's kind of screaming the same thing. No, but I, I get your marketing skill, but yeah. I'm just saying, no, let me tell you, in the places that matters, mm-hmm. I will not tell them any other name that's Spark Nation. Mm-hmm. Imagine talking to you until about 1 a.m. last, no, two nights ago, and they said, yeah. look, Spark Nation is global. We'll know you. Don't, <laughs> don't. So it's it worked well for us. Mm-hmm. And every, either you call it negative press for me, I've mm-hmm. just seen positive or mm-hmm. The negative one just blew us. So it made people that matter such, what are you guys? Mm-hmm. And they found the positive one. Mm-hmm. So that's worked for me on every space, including financially. Okay. I'm telling you now. Okay, I can see his words financially. It worked. Three million it pound house. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, the, the, the negative worked. So I must thank some of those people who do negative stuff. But mm-hmm. I must also say that sometimes we have to give each other chances. Okay. So to be fair to Spat Nation, because I'm not trying to be, I'm trying to be as objective as possible in this interview. So to be fair to Spat Nation, you have been investigated a lot of times, but everything has been cleared. You've never, nothing has ever been convicted in terms of it's specifically your fault. Like any police charges have been dropped. The Charity Commission investigation, I'm not sure if it's still open or not, but that is another thing that could be an issue and might look bad on, on Spat Nation. In order for a Charity Commission to want to investigate you, they must have some kind of inkling or something that something somewhere isn't very charitable. We don't live in the age of inkling anymore. It's social media and every organization, when there is public noise, they have to do their job. Mm -hmm. And it is not wrong for the Charity Commission to ask us questions. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you now that many times they've asked us the same question like, 50 times <laughs> and the team there the board they keep saying but we answered that I say oh sorry but mm-hmm. we answered that so i get it mm-hmm. they have to also find out if they hear things so when they say they are investigating you investigation must come from things like abuse money fault and all that but when our books are clean 10 years books mm-hmm. when the first time charity walked in they felt oh these are young black people they don't know what they are doing they've mm-hmm. seen book 10 years mm-hmm. we received mm-hmm. what more can i do as a black organization we have the board in place mm-hmm. i don't influence the board we intentionally set up a board of trustees that has people that are not even in the nation mm-hmm. so that we can be accountable. Mm-hmm. So, hey, we've done all that we know how to do mm-hmm. unless if an organization just wants to victimize us. But as far as we're concerned, legally, we've done everything that we have to do. So from now till eternity, the worst thing press will do is to say, imagine the press writing so so as someone associated to Spark Nation. Mm-hmm. In the writer's mind, mm-hmm. does that make sense? Associated means war. Yeah. Oh, they arrested someone associated with Spark Nation. Yeah. There are 2,000 people there. Mm-hmm. What is association? Is that person the pastor? Even if I'm arrested, mm-hmm. it can't be Spark Nation's fault. Yeah. It's my decision. Yeah. If you're not seeking unnecessary clout. Mm-hmm. So they've, police have done their investigation. It always comes back because there's nothing there. We are prosperous. We're blessed because... In 10 years time, our community will realize some of the things that we've done that is way ahead of our time. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell them now. No. Okay. You know what, yeah? Prior to this interview, I'm glad I've had a chance to speak to you on this, understand this because I'll be perfectly honest. Prior to the interview, when I saw that you had this many investigations but then no convictions to the organization per se, I was thinking... How much money is this guy paying the police? Like you must, have, <laughs> you must have them in your pocket or something. Imagine how is this guy getting away with all of this stuff? So obviously, everything you said does make sense to an extent. 
Now, if I have the money to pay the police, I'd rather sleep in this and keep my money. <laughs> I'll just say, look, let me be locked up. Give me the money. Now, um, the- whilst doing my research on yourself, uh, one of the things that I found out which a lot of people might not know is you're actually related to John Boyega. So to, apparently you're his cousin. Yeah. So has he ever come to the to the organization or to the church? Has we, he ever been or are you guys close? I don't know. What no, the- no. We, we um, He's busy with whatever he's doing. I'm yeah. busy. But we'll meet sometime and talk. But for now, everybody is in their lane doing their work. Okay. Um. So aside from Spat Nation, I, I know you said you do a lot of uh, you. You stepped down to do a lot more philanthropy work. Yeah. So what else are you doing at the moment aside from Spat Nation? We we need to influence policies that has to do with young people, both in Africa mm-hmm. and in North America. Mm-hmm. And I'm working hard on that at the moment. Mm-hmm. That's how much I'm legally allowed to okay. disclose. No, no, that's Apart that's from right. other businesses, mm-hmm. if business comes up, I'll do what I need to do and move on. Mm-hmm. Um, but majorly, I'm dedicating my life now to influencing policy, not necessarily be in front of the camera, mm-hmm. but think about policy, what mm-hmm. affects entrepreneurs and young yeah. people all over the world yeah. and have a major input and push policies through and even lobby government to pass laws that help young people. Would you go into politics one day? Um, maybe. Okay. Do you know they say politicians are the world's biggest liars, right? Are they? Yeah, apparently. That's why I won't be a politician, but I can go into politics. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you've read it, that it just shows you you're, you're ready. You're ready. What, you're ready. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I, I see some people say, "Oh, well, you know, in his interview, he's so manipulative." I said, "That's the problem in our no, community. Honest, if you're if you're intelligent, that's manipulation. Honest, so I have to keep sure." To be honest, I didn't see it as being manipulative. I just saw it as you're a smart guy who who knows how to use the words correctly. That's not being manipulative. That's just you're a smart guy and. Because I knew that I had to make sure I come to the <laughs> with my smart brain before you go and spin me in circles <laughs> as well. <laughs> I, in my opinion, I just think I'm I'm honest. I'm not saying that I can't make mistakes. Mm-hmm. I can make mistakes, but because I'm not afraid of people, I'm not afraid of opinion, what someone says, mm-hmm. I'm just going to say things the way they are. And then mm-hmm. if I'm wrong, I'm willing to say, oh, I think I'm wrong about that. Mm-hmm. For example, black people don't have anything to offer me. No, not really true. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was trying to pass a message across mm-hmm. with that. I love black people. And you should follow me to the streets one day. They love me there. Mm-hmm. I can imagine. I can imagine. Everywhere I turn to. So sometimes I wonder, who is it? actually speaking on social media because all the young guys come to me and say look i love your message i love what you're saying because i i really care for them okay um so i think we've come to the end of the interview and once well the conversation but whatever we're calling it but yeah thank you so much for joining us today i'm glad you've been able to clear up some of the stuff that you've said in previous interviews and some of the questions that weren't asked in previous interviews I'm not saying anything um but until next time i've been your boy of advance this is bng tv make sure you subscribe and stay tuned thank you pastor toby thank you sir. we'll catch you next time peace thank you <laughs>